all the honor and he's worthy of all the glory. It's so good to see y'all today and we greet those. Let me back up. On behalf of Pastor and Lady Cobb and the Oak Grove NBC Church family, we do greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We greet those who are watching via our cyber sanctuary on today. It's just great to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. God to see you on this morning. Our praise team is going to come with an opening selection followed by the worship declaration by Deacon Ray, and then I will follow with prayer. Amen. I'd like to say good morning to you, you, and you. 
It's a great Sunday morning to be alive. Let's recite the 100 Psalms together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. God's word is already blessed. Father, we humbly come before you. Lord God, with bowed down heads, hands lifted up, O oh God, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. Lord God, before we ask for anything, search our hearts, O oh God. If there's anything in us that's not of you, O oh God, we repent right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, if we have sinned against you or sinned against heaven, God, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, if we have an ought with our brother or our sister, God, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that love abound in, in this house like never before, oh God. Lord God, we ask for your power and your presence. We ask for your anointing on today, oh God. Lord God, we came with expectation, oh God, that you will meet us at the point of our need, oh God. Lord God, there are some that need healing on today. Touch in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha, God, our healer, oh God. Some need of prayer, God. We know that prayer can go where we can go. Lord God, we know, oh God, that there are some, oh God, that need a financial breakthrough on today. You're a God that is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Oh God, we just thank you and we honor you on today. We honor you for who you are, oh God. So God, we ask that you move mightily in this service, oh God. We lift up our pastor and Lady Cobb and First Family, God. We lift up the praise team, the musicians, God. We lift up the church leadership, the executive board, oh God, the deacons, the mothers, the trustees, oh God, the missionaries, oh God, the ushers, oh God. Lord God, we lift up the media team, God. We lift up our children to you, oh God. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Lord God, we lift up those who are in the military, those who are on the mm, those in the nursing home, oh God. We lift up the homeless, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Mm. For those who are out on the street, oh God. I, oh God, I ask that you mm, just build a wall of warmth around them, oh God. We have so much to be grateful for, oh God. Lord God, mm, Lord God, hallelujah. We had a home, oh God. We had a roof over our head, oh God. We had clothes to put on and food to eat. We have so much to be grateful on for on today, oh God. So Lord, Lord God, let us remember those who are less fortunate, oh God. Mm. Lord God, as we pass them by, even if it's just to give them a hamburger or some french fries, just to let them know you are loved, you are not forgotten. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, this service is in your hands. Do what you do best, and that is throw your weight of glory around, oh God. Lord God, I ask to set your spirit just hover in this place. Mm. Hallelujah. Use pastor for your glory, oh God. Oh God, let the, the praise team mm, sing like they're singing on the heavenly choir. Oh God, mm, let us just worship you and worship you in spirit and in truth. And we're going to give you the praise for this is our prayer. This is our solemn plea. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, you may have your seats. We will now have our weekly observation. Good afternoon, Grovites. These are your weekly observations. 
Pastor Cobb would like to thank everyone who volunteered and assisted with our outreach project to the Salvation Army and the less fortunate in Raleigh and the residents at Dorothy Manor in Holly Springs. Your continued support of our church efforts to reach the community is greatly appreciated. Let's keep one of our beloved covenant partners and member of our praise team, Sister Shannon Farrer, and her family in prayer as they face the challenges during the loss of their grandmother, Deaconess Helen Edwards. Funeral services will be on Monday, January 22nd at Ebenezer AME Zion Church. Visitation is from 12.30 to 1 p.m. And the celebration of life will begin at 1 p.m. The family has requested assistance with service for the repast. If you are available and would like to assist, please let Pastor Cobb know. Pastor Cobb has begun a new series for Wednesday Now. The book entitled The Gifts and Ministries of the Holy Spirit by Lester Shumwell will be used as foundation during this series. The book is available for purchase on Amazon. Our Winter Revival concludes this Thursday, January 25th with guest Bishop Sherman Blandon. And here on with us on this uh, afternoon, amen. Thank God for them, amen. Amen. This is one of the Sundays you sure enough had <laughs> pressure away. Amen. I stepped out and I didn't, I didn't know. I don't know. Um, I, wa I, I watched the news a little bit more than I did because I kind of stopped. But I'll tune in for the weather, the sake of the weather. And I was under the impression that we, it was supposed to warm up today. But nonetheless, found out to be different when I stepped out. Uh, but thank God that we had a roof over our head. Amen. And we didn't know the difference. Why? Because in the home it was warm. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. That's, that's a blessing. Amen. That you don't know how cold it is till you step out. Amen. Because you've been inside of a warm home. And so we thank God for how he continues to bless us and certainly to our evangelist Sims and our Deacon Ray and all of our trustees and everyone in your respective places. Um, we do have a few uh, things we want to bring to your, your attention as we go forth and uh, in the furtherance uh, as far as our pastoral briefs. One, I uh, want to say, uh, and I don't think I said this on Thursday night, amen, I know people don't do stuff for uh, notoriety, but I uh, want to say thank you, amen, to our usher, amen, our sister Shelly ushered on, on Thursday night. Y'all give her a hand, amen. She ushered on Thursday, and I, I believe I, I, I can't remember, but I, you know, thank God for everybody, but did not, I don't recall recognizing you. Now, I know you don't do it for recognition, but thank you so much. Every week that our ushers, we have, uh, have had an usher on the door every week, and so thank you so much for that. And so uh, we don't take that lightly. Amen. Ushers uh, help keep the service um, going smooth. Amen. And the usher, amen, the usher can make or break a service. Uh, they're the first fa uh, first faces that you see. You do know uh, some folks will leave because of a uh, rude usher, amen. And so thank God we don't have that problem here, amen. But we do thank God for those that continue to serve, amen. And I will just implore you, amen. I, I think our sister Linda would uh, would mind me saying this. Uh, they need some more ushers, amen. They can use some more ushers to help, amen, on the door. Not that the ones that are there are insufficient, amen. So if you are not doing anything, if you're not on the auxiliary, amen, get up and do something, amen, amen. You don't have to usher. Amen. You're not standing up about 45 or so minutes. I know if you have to sit down because your back hurts, sit down and get back up again. Amen. We need some help. Come on here. Amen. Ain't no need to. Amen. Come on. Amen. No need to perpetrate. Amen. Because you think about this, beloved. And I'm saying this sincerely. Amen. When you die, amen, you don't want folks to have to make up stuff and put on the obituary. You know, they, they loved everybody. They loved everybody. Amen. But then when it comes to the church, you just say you joined the church. Y'all know y'all don't see some obituaries like that, trying to figure out something. They came to Sunday school, and you know, and what, and here they were. Amen. What did they do for the past fifty years? And so, Amen. With that being stated, I would just employ all of us. If you're not working in an area in the church, Amen. Get busy, not for Pastor Cobb's sake, Amen. Not for the sake, no, not even for the sake of the church, but for the sake of your relationship, Amen. I work for Jesus because I got a relationship with Him. Amen. And when you have a relationship with the Lord and we're not throwing no shots and no blows, amen. But amen, that's something to think about. Amen. When when you when you leave this world, don't don't have folks having to scratch their head trying to figure out something nice to put in your obituary because you do know somebody said, I don't want to hear that, but you do know unless you are raptured, you're gonna die. 
Amen. Now, yeah, I know we don't like to hear that, but amen. All of us going to have to check out of here. Amen. And so you don't want to put nobody through that pain and misery trying to uh, figure out and calling folks. What did they do uh, 20 years ago? Amen. Amen. If you go ahead and do it and let your light shine, ain't nobody got to dig through nowhere. Amen. Amen. So uh, receive that in love. But I do know that ushers uh, could use some more uh, uh, feet and, and legs and hands uh, to help with their uh, auxiliary. And with that being stated, we were in the executive board meeting yesterday as as you know, yours truly serves as the vice president for the uh, Weight Bit Missionary Baptist Association, the union. And so uh, I do know the ushers may already have this information. So if I'm giving this to you uh, and you already have it, just overlook me. Um, I didn't know if you had it or not. But the one day session for the ushers, I don't know if you already have it. That's going to be in Fayetteville. So I will employ the uh, president of our ushers uh, on yesterday was talking about how um, the necessity it is uh, to have ushers, not just ushers on the floor, but well trained train ushers amen and so with that being stated um i would implore you amen if the ushers can sister linda i don't know if you already have it you may if you don't amen uh it will be on the 24th uh, which i uh, presume is a saturday uh at mount olive missionary baptist church um and uh the registration is from seven to eight and the session begins at 9 a.m and that is in fayetteville now i know someone saying oh fayetteville is so far away but amen ushers amen how many how many of y'all have ever ushered before anybody ever ushered before amen ushering is not an easy job amen especially if you're in a church that is active where you have the you know folks getting slain and all that you need to there's a lot of training that you need to go to so when uh because you can hurt yourself Amen. We're not trying to be funny with that, but we, we, we're saying that, not saying our ushers are not trained, but I would, um, it would be nice if our ushers could attend that um, on the uh, 24th. If not, uh, if one person could go, that would be great. Bring the information back that you all can get that training um, on the 24th at Mount Olive uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Also, by way of reminders, I do want to say, as it relates to the Wake Missionary Baptist Association, that we are coming up uh, on the uh, Spring uh, Institute, amen, which will be April. It's not in uh, February, of course, but it'll be uh, April the 16th, 17th, and 18th. Now, I'm throwing all this out because when the day gets here, we're going to say, I didn't know nothing about it. I, yeah, I would have, you know, so letting you know now that the Spring Institute is on the uh, 16th and 17th and 18th uh, of, um, of uh, April, and then also the Black History Program will be on the 25th of February at Springfield Baptist Church. Now, we're certainly not saying that you got to go to all this stuff, but I want you to be in the know. We are a part of an association, and I think it's important that we be a part and we show up that we show up that they see us in the association and it would be just uh, i think it would be a bad name for your pastor to be serving uh, in a, as an officer and don't never see the members amen so we don't want that to be named among us uh, here at the grove and so if you're a leader amen and you ain't been to the union meeting amen i hope you feel convicted because that you you need to go you need to go to the union meeting i know it's uh, at, at nine o'clock but it's not all day it's not all day. It's just from 9 to 12, and they have good sessions for us. And so with that being stated, just govern yourself accordingly to that information. All right? Uh, so uh, also by way of reminders uh, or a vote of thanks, I want to say thank you to those that was in the uh, weekly observations that participated with the giveaway uh, or the care packages at the Salvation Army and those that went with us last Sunday to Dorothy Mail. And I'm going to say thank you to those that did that because on last Sunday, you know, it takes time to get refreshed and in the back and get dressed and stuff and all that. Uh, and we had given word giving word to those that if, if you wanted to just give me 15 minutes and we will come out from the back or go on to Dorothy Manor and when we got that they had already did one building amen and then we got to the second building we're trying to get things out and uh, those that were helping uh, didn't even want me to uh, they didn't want even really want me to help amen because they were so busy doing but I want to say thank you Thank you for not putting the weight on just the pastor. Amen. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And even if we ain't got about, it won't, it won't 10 of us, but the, the, the four, the five, and I ain't gonna start because somebody gonna get offended because you start calling names. Well, they ain't call me out. I ain't, we're not throwing blows, but I'm saying thank you because, amen, that's a lot to have to do all that. Those, uh, those, uh, trash cans were heavy, uh, with all of those, uh, wipes in there. And so with that being stated and, and, uh, we were be, we were able to be a blessing to Dorothy Manor. So thank you for that. Also to our grocery giveaway on yesterday. So thank you to our department that continues to do our grocery giveaway every month thank you so much amen feeding amen feeding Dorothy Mel.
Atlanta, and we want that to keep going, amen, as long as it possibly can. So don't wear out, amen, uh, our uh, uh, mission department, those that can come and give a helping hand uh, that we can get those items to them uh, as it relates to uh, feeding those that are at Dorothy Manor. And so we do it better when we, we do it better when we do it together. And certainly there's a lot to be done here at the Grove. Uh, as uh, also stated, the funeral for uh, Mother Helen Edwards will be the tomorrow uh, at Ebenezer, um, and the funeral will begin at 1 p.m. Pray for me, uh, as the family did ask for me to eulogize her. And so uh, we'll have to, normally Monday's a rest day, uh, but certainly uh, there's no way we would have turned that down. We do what you can uh, as often as you can. So those that cannot go, be in prayer uh, that the Lord would just bless in that service as they go through this time of bereavement. Amen? Amen. Because it's them this time, but we don't know who's going to be next. Amen. And, amen. And, and that's what I that's what I think about is uh, you, you have to go out of your way. You have to go out of your way um, because uh, when when things happen to you uh, and I and this is what Lord, you know, I, I, I'm just asking this before we go any further. Do the Lord ever speak to any of y'all? Do, do y'all ever have the Lord speak to you? And I, I'm not meaning that to be funny. I'm not talking about did Pastor Cobb speak to y'all. I'm talking about do the Lord speak to you? Uh, and one of the things the Lord uh, re uh, just just reminded me of on this week was uh, people will not remember what you did so much. They'll remember how you treated them. And that, that, you know, not that I had did anything wrong, but that thing just stuck out. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I called it. Amen. And so, you know, because you do get tired. You do get tired. But when you think about that, you, 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 you let your words be seasoned with grace. You know, so that you don't come off, come across the wrong way. Amen. And so uh, people may not ever remember what all you did, but they will remember how you treated them. Amen. And so with that being stated, let's go out of our way. Um, if you can attend the funeral, please do so. If you cannot be in prayer, Sister Shannon uh, could not be more of a disciple if she was. Amen. Because she is faithful to uh, the ministry here and helps out. But I understand we got to work tomorrow. So uh, some of us have to work tomorrow. So if you cannot be there, be in prayer. Now you can you can pray. You can pray that the Lord would bless uh, in that service uh, on tomorrow. All right. That's all that I have as it relates to a way of reminders and announcements. Thank you all for your continual giving. Amen. This will be the last um, uh, Thursday for our revival coming up this Thursday with Bishop Blandon. Thank you so much for those that have been faithful. And uh, how many of y'all have been out uh, one night? At least one night. At least one night. Amen. Raise your hand. You've been out one night. Yeah, okay. Some, some, some of y'all been out every night. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. That when our guests came, you were at home. That when our guests came, you were at home. And so let's be, let's, we got one more round to go uh, this Thursday at, uh, uh, with Bishop Blandon. He will be here with us. Uh, we will not have service. We will have service next Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday. But the first Sunday in February, we will not have service here. We will go to be with Pastor Evans for his fifth pastoral anniversary uh, at, um, in Godwin at Holiness Chapel. And so what we'll do, because the first Sunday is normally Holy Communion, we will push uh, Holy Communion to the second Sunday. All right, so we'll push Holy Communion back to the second Sunday in February. And also, we will do uh, Black History Month recognition or Black Heritage Month in the month of February. So what we're asking is, um, I believe there's, I don't know how many Sundays, is it four or five? In uh, Is this a leap year? What is it? Okay, it's four, okay. All right, so uh, this year we're asking that we get three, at least three of our young people. Uh, now, get your grandchild, amen. You know, uh, you know, to tell them, hey, get, find somebody they can do a black history report on, as we did last year. And so if we can get at least three of our young people uh, to be a part of that, the only thing you have to do is record it at the home, on your phone, and then just send it to us, and we'll air it. Uh, we're asking that if you would just do that, uh, let us know if you're willing to do it. Now, either way, we want to highlight someone every week, but it will be nice if our youth would do it. It would be nice if our youth would do it. Not the grown people. I'm saying that for a reason. Not the grown people. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this because I'm talking too much. But our youth will never learn. And the church will be in utter ruins if we don't train our children how to do in the house of God. And I know we don't like to hear that because some of us, our children don't obey us like they should. Now, that's a personal problem. You do in your house how you want to, but I know in my house, 1341, if we say get up, that's what you're going to do. And I think we need to go back to some of that. Because we look on Sunday, where are our children? We ain't got about two or three coming on Sunday. 
And then when we have something for free, all the children want to show up. I know I'm talking right. I know I'm talking right. Amen. And I ain't calling shots at nobody, but let's, let's stop that. Let's stop that. Now, you can't control the, if you got, you know, if you're a grandparent, I get it. It's hard when, you know, you know, so you just pray on that. But you can't tell your children, don't just come when stuff is free. Tell them to come. We got some, we need some ushers. Come on here. Amen. We need our youth to, and I'm telling you, because church, we, as we that are in position now, we're going to get older. And where's the church going to be in the next 20 years? And that's what I'm afraid of. Because if we don't have no youth and they're not trained, they're not going to know how to do. Amen. And so sometimes you don't have to ask them. You need to make them. Now, I know they don't tell you that in the school system. You know, you just ask them. If they don't want to do it, then you don't do it. But he said, train them up in the way they should go. Not the way the world tell you to do it. You raise your children. Not the school. You raise them. Amen. And if you raise them up right, God will do the increase. Amen. So we ain't telling you how to do in your household, but I'm just trying to tell you, we need some more children up in here. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, nonetheless, we see that love. So we're not doing again. We ain't throwing no shot. But we are in reset for 2024. And with this reset, we reset everything that we're doing. And so with that being stated, we want everybody to be willing workers. Amen. Up for the glory of God. All right. I've said too much, and I don't want nobody to get mad. Because, you know, they think I'm throwing. I feel good. Y'all feel good? I feel good. Amen. I ain't mad. I'm just telling you. Sometimes as pastors, you just got to tell the truth. Amen. They don't sit well. Amen. But after a while, you will say, you know what? He was right. Because uh, I ain't fussing at nobody, so help me. But we got to tell the truth. Amen. And so we want to see our youth more active in our church and in our ministry and engaged. Amen. And I'll say this lastly, that the youth will watch what the older are doing. Children, watch what you do. You want to hire a child? How they know how to roll their eyes? Because they seen somebody grown do it. How they know how to cuss? They heard what some... Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you have to be careful of even what you let your children watch. Now, at my house, and I'm talking to... My, now, call me. I know some of y'all going to start laughing, but I'm... Now, me, Brother CL, and I know the Cowboys lost the other... You know, they, <laughs> And I, <laughs> they lost Evangelist Sim. And I was going to call Trustee ACL because our game got pushed, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we turned around and did the same thing. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> oh, let's, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Last night, well, we ain't talking about that. Oh, you, you, so you afford it. Oh, Lord. We got some. We got some. We, we need to have altar prayer. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, with that being stated, amen, we do want to just, <laughs> as, we, uh, as we go through, I don't forgot my thoughts, so let me just stop talking. I, uh, but let's be in prayer for everyone, and just thank you to everyone that do what you do. I know you had to press your way. It's cold out there. But thank you so much to our brother Moore. We know you go to, y'all play at two churches, but y'all are here faithful. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Don't ever think. That you are not appreciated. Amen. So I don't forgot what I was going to say. I shouldn't have been thrown off about the Dallas Cowboys. But nonetheless, amen. <laughs> we'll call for uh, Vanda Sims and she will take us through our worship. The trustees are going to come forward to receive your offering. Amen. <laughs> and if you're ready, we're going to ask those that can stand. If you will stand for the offertory declaration, for those who are giving electronically, we have Cash App Give and Giveify. You can search for Oak Grove NBC Apex, and for PayPal, it's Oak Grove NBC Apex at gmail.com. And we're going to ask if you will put your offering in your right hand because we give right or your electronic device. And repeat after me: I decree and declare. That every offering, seed and love gift I sow, will manifest every blessing you have in store for me. I place a demand on my seed, and by faith receive, lost souls saved, in open heaven, earth divinely invaded, storehouse unlocked, miracles created, 
declarations, visitations, and divine manifestations. Positions and promotion, loans approved, debt removed, marriages and restored marriages, medical needs met, children protected and covered, provisions and resources, complete restora restoration in every area that concerns me. It is so, and so it shall be. In Jesus' name, amen. We ask that you turn to the wall and follow the direction of the ushers. you for who he is hallelujah it is now time for the word of God to be preached by the man of God and that is our pastor elder Jamar Cobb I ask that you continue to pray for him as he stands behind this sacred desk to say what thus saith the Lord continue to keep him in prayer that God will strengthen him and keep him and that as he seeks God, God will give, continue to give him the vision for this house. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to point our hands to Pastor Cobb and say, Pastor Cobb, Pastor Cobb. Preach, the preach the word. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. have your way. Amen. The praise team is going to come back with another selection. And then the next voice you will hear is that of our pastor, Elder Jamar Cobb. Amen.
and we bless your name. Father, we thank you for another day, another opportunity to give your name the glory, to give your name the honor and the praise. You're worthy. You're worthy. Thank you for where you brought us from, what you brought us through, where you're taking us to. God, we give you all the praise. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't say thank you enough for all the great things that you've done. Bless the furtherance of this service. Decrease me, you increase even the more. Lord, make these letters on these pages come alive in our lives that God not only be hearers but doers of your word as we give you glory, as we give you honor, as we give you praise. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over this sanctuary. We do honor him on today for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. Amen. For his spirit that is moving in this place. And we're so glad to see, amen, my mother in the house on today. Amen. 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 Glad to see her on today. And certainly, amen, these... Uh, saints, a lot of these saints are coming over, and I, we don't take it lightly um, because uh, many of them come from their service over to ours. Amen. And so we thank God that uh, they could be uh, home eating, doing whatever else. Amen. But they uh, think it not robbery to come and join us, and so we thank God for them. Also, we are glad. I know she's in the back. Amen. But we're so glad that our sister Nancy is back in in service. Amen. And how the Lord has healed her and touched her body and brought her through amen and the thing about god is um uh, he'll bring you out and you don't look like what you've been through amen and so we thank god for for her amen and certainly to uh sister zuri amen and then along with our, our trustee emeritus john amen we thank god for all of you all of my father's children on today and certainly yeah, we're just glad to be in the house of the lord one more time amen let's turn if you would stand with me as we turn to the book of first corinthians chapter number two. First corinthians chapter number two amen we began the year from this series uh, let's go to work, amen. And on last uh, Sunday, we talked about, well, what are we uh, going to work for? And our subject on last Sunday was soul winners. Uh, and so on today, we want to lay another uh, brick on the foundation as uh, to uh, help us understand that if we're going to be soul winners, how do we win souls, amen. And, and so uh, we want to uh, lay this um, brick on this foundation that we will continue to build as we go through this month of uh, January. And I'll say, if you don't have the book, uh, the Spiritual Gifts, uh, that we're going through uh, by Lester Sumrall, uh, you're missing out on a treat. And so uh, if you don't have the book, I would just implore you to get that book and, and dive into it, amen, and go through it. Uh, and uh, there, there is on, I know it's on Amazon and some other uh, platforms. Um, it'll bless you real good as we go through that with our Bible study. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to rush this series um, with our Bible study. So normally, we try to hurry up and get it, you know, because we want to go to something else but uh our goal our goal this year is spiritual growth and so with that being stated we're going to take the time we need to get through it amen and uh and we we're believing that god will uh, give us the increase as uh, we're believing him to do so all right uh first corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 i'm going to read that for your consideration from the new international readers version uh and it reads and this was the way it was with me uh, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, he says, I didn't come with fancy words or human wisdom. I preached to you the truth about God's love. Verse 2, my goal while I was with you was to talk about only one thing. Let me try to say one thing. And Paul says, and that was Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. Amen. As we uh, are assembled on today, uh, for the next few moments, I want to talk to you from this subject. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, God bless you uh, to our sister Lennon. The church at Corinth existed in a secular and sensual city. Uh, the people of the city during the time of the text were preoccupied with pleasure, athletics, commercial, and personal Affluence. Uh, the question that the church would have is how could a church be a light in a world of darkness? 
uh, this church uh, sent Paul a letter. And so Corinthians is really Paul's response to their letter. And Paul took the time to answer their question concerning marriage and celibacy. So Paul had to deal with food offered to idols in this letter. Paul dealt with proper dress and responsibilities for the women in the church. Paul had to deal with public worship. He informed the church in this letter that the house of God was not a place where you could just do what you wanted to do. Uh, why? Because after all, it's not your house. Uh, yeah, this is God's house. Paul dealt with spiritual gifts. He explains that while we are all gifted, we don't all have the same gifts. Uh, yeah, there are diversities of gifts, but they all are given to us by the same spirit. In this letter to the church at Corinth, Paul even dealt with the resurrection of the dead. And that's good news because for the believer, uh, death is not the end. Yeah, just like Jesus, God will too raise us up. Paul had other concerns. He had received reports of behavior problems of some, and to make matters worse, there were even some divisions in the church. And I know most of us think that cliches or cliques, rather, and posses just started a few years ago, but the fact of the matter is that division has spread throughout the body of Christ many years ago. Folks in the church didn't just start acting up in your lifetime. Uh, but even when Paul penned this letter some 1,970 years ago, there were some people who came to church, but they did not know how to act. And I know y'all called y'all cold, but talk back to me if you can. Paul had received some reports about factions forming in the church, and as a result, folks were talking about taking each other to court. Sexual impurity was common and condoned. The basic purpose of this letter was to correct the actions and the attitudes of many of the believers. And would you know that all of this was going on right in the church? Paul said, church folks, there comes a time when you must learn how to act. And this chapter continues Paul's discussion of the gospel and the wisdom of those Christians at Corinth who admired the philosophy of men and they thought that the church would have been better off to use man's wisdom and man's philosophy uh, to win the loss rather than the simple and despised message of the cross. In uh, our uh, book that we're reading from, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 11, notice what Paul says. He says, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Paul says, I heard there are some arguments and disagreements uh, going on because you are glorying in human leaders. Some were glorying in Paul. Others were in Apollo. Some in Peter or Cephas. Notice verse 12 of chapter 1. He says, now this I say that every one of you said I am of Paul and I of Apollos and I of Cephas and I of Christ. All of this glorying in men led to divisions. And my brothers and sisters, these divisions were caused by pride. And pride is a ugly thing. Yeah. And I've come to remind somebody that pride still goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Paul lets us know that the cure for the divisions caused by pride is to first re-examine the cross of Christ and then you must re-examine your own life. Yeah, the Corinthians were boasting in men because of human wisdom and human power. But Paul says that the cross insults the wisdom and the power of man. People of God, what I'm trying to tell you today is that there's no amount of human greatness that will ever be able to do what the cross of Christ does. Let me just remind you that you cannot be saved on your own. But if you are saved at all, you are saved because of the cross of Christ. Paul also reminded the Corinthians of their calling. And when you check the record, you have to admit that God has chosen some strange people to work for him. And if you're not familiar with strange folks, then maybe you might be the strange one I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Those who are uh, not wise 
alive according to the world standards, the weak and the lonely. And that's good news because we were not chosen because of who we are. Uh, and but we were chosen in spite of who we are and, and little uh, still becomes much when you place it in the master's hand uh, the cross of Christ ought to humble you because I don't care how much money you have you cannot buy salvation and somebody said if religion was a thing that money could buy the rich would live and the poor would die but I'm glad you cannot buy salvation yeah every day we are the same Thank God for the cross. Paul says, if you need a reason to boast, don't boast in Paul. If you need a reason to brag, don't brag in Apollos. If you need a reason to boast, don't boast in Peter. But Paul says in chapter 1, verse 31, he says, he that glorifieth, let him glory in the Lord. In other words, we should never boast in ourselves or in other men. But if you got to boast, boast in the Lord. Yeah, you ought to boast in the Lord. And when you learn how to boast in the Lord, it'll lead to unity and not division. Uh, so as we cross over into the second chapter, which is our focus text, Paul says, I did not come in eloquence. Uh, no, no, I didn't come with superior wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. In other words, Paul is saying, I didn't come to glorify myself. I didn't come to start a religious fan club, but Paul says, I came to glorify God. If Paul would have used spectacular speech and fancy philosophy, he would have exalted himself and hidden the very Christ that he came to proclaim. But God sent him to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. Notice verse number two, Paul says, for I determined, uh, I resolved, I decided. Uh, the New International Reason Version said it like this. Uh, my goal while I was with you uh, was to talk about only one thing. Uh, and that was Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. Uh, and somebody said that God took the worst thing that man could do uh, to his son and transformed it to the best thing uh, that he could do for mankind. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, what was a symbol of weakness uh, has been transformed to a symbol of power. Uh, and somebody out to shout power. Uh, uh, before Christ died, the cross was considered as weak. Uh, what people or what power is there uh, in something that was made of wood uh, that was used to execute common uh, criminals? Uh, uh, but the cross of Christ was no ordinary cross. No, no. Uh, this cross was filled with power because of who was hung uh, on the cross. Uh, and I don't know how you feel about it, uh, uh, but I don't know there are... Uh, there are some uh, who would say give me Christ uh, without the cross uh, and others would say give me the cross uh, without Christ uh, but the redeemed of the Lord uh, ought to say glory in Christ uh, crucified uh, and too many of us uh, are magnifying ourselves to the extent uh, that we, we fail to reveal uh, the glory of Christ uh, uh, is it all about your preaching uh, is it all about your singing uh, is it all about you being in leadership huh? and I've noticed huh, how some people act when they're not in charge huh? Lord help me to preach a word huh? uh, when they're not preaching huh? when they're not singing when they're not teaching huh? if you can only be faithful huh? when you're in charge huh? something is wrong with you huh? somebody ought to help me in this house um, uh, if you can only get happy when you preach, uh, if you can only get happy when you pray, uh, if you can only feel the spirit when you sing, uh, something is wrong with you. Uh, notice verse number three. Uh, Paul says, when I came to you, uh, I was weak and very afraid uh, and trembling all over. Ah, uh, here is Paul, uh, the greatest missionary of the church. Uh, he was responsible for leading countless people to the Lord. Uh, and 
now he says that when he came to Corinth, uh, he was weak and afraid and was trembling uh, all over. And if we be honest, you have to admit uh, that sometimes it's not easy uh, to tell others about Jesus. Uh, it's not always easy uh, to be a qualified uh, witness. Uh, but I've got good news today uh, that even in our weakness, uh, even in our fear, uh, even in our trembling, uh, the gospel is still uh, powerful. Uh, I wish I had a witness in this house. Uh, somebody ought to shout power. Uh, I've learned uh, that God can work it out uh, in spite of us uh, because the fact of the matter uh, is not really about us uh, y'all can help me get out of here uh, because some of them are still cold uh, but somebody in here ought to catch your own fire it's all about Jesus uh, I don't know how you feel about it uh, but when I come here on Sundays uh, I'm not looking for you uh, but I'm looking for God to show up uh, and show out and I got a question I want to ask you. Won't he do it? God will. He'll show up. I said God will. He'll show up. And there's been times in my life when my voice wasn't right. Somebody help me. Now through here. There's been times when we didn't have this nice sound system. Didn't have a keyboard player like we do now. Couldn't find the right key. The right tempo was off. But I kept on preaching because Lord, because I've learned if you keep on doing it, God will. He'll show up. Say yeah. Say yeah. And I found out it's not about your tempo. It's not about your key. It's not about your delivery. But Jesus is enough for I I determined not to know anything among you. Paul said, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And there is a whole lot of churches that used to pick on old preachers. Because every time they preach, they had to go to go to the cross. Every time they preached, they had to tell you he died. That that's the good news uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, they hung him high, uh, stretched him wide. Uh, he hung his head. Uh, he died, uh, died uh, for my sins. Uh, died uh, for your sins. Uh, died uh, until the sun uh, refused to shine. Uh, I said he died, uh, died uh, until the earthquake. Uh, died uh, until graves opened. Uh, died uh, until dead men got up. Uh, he died. Uh, yes, he died. Uh, stayed there. Uh, the rest of Friday. Uh, stayed there uh, all day Saturday. Uh, but early uh, Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, and I heard uh, somebody say, uh, living, uh, he loved me. Uh, dying, uh, he saved me. Uh, buried, uh, he carried my uh, sins uh, far away. Uh, rising, uh, he justified, uh, freed me uh, forever. Uh, but one day, uh, let me hear you say, uh, one day. One day, he's coming back, a glorious day. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Jesus. Jesus is, Jesus is enough. Paul says, when I came to you, didn't come with eloquency of speech. Didn't come with enticing words. He said, but I came only to tell you about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Saints of God, if we're going to go to work, if we're going to really be soul winners, 
you got to understand in this new year that you ain't got to offer nobody else nothing but Jesus. And now we've gotten to a time where it's trying to get church folks happy. When you ought to be glad that he died. You ought to be glad that he got up just for you. But we're spending so much time trying to get the church folks excited. And it seems like we've become so commercialized. And unless the Lord's blessed us with a house or a car, we really don't really get with the word because I, I'm going through. But the fact that you got up this morning, the fact that your heat still work. Because see, y'all do know there were folks in Durham that didn't have power for over a, a day. And here it is, you still have power. Somebody give God a hallelujah. Jesus is enough. That's our, that's our goal. That's our mission. The choir, the praise team, and whatever we do, Jesus is enough. We ain't got to offer nothing else because he's more than enough. Jesus will be a daddy when daddy is gone. He'll be a mother when mother goes on. He will be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you need to be healed, he'll be your healer. He is more than enough. And so Jesus is enough. Let's stand all over this sanctuary. Jesus is enough. And as we go through this season, we ain't got nothing else to offer you <laughs> than Jesus. And I am content that if you just give me Jesus, I have more than enough. If you just give me Jesus, you ain't got to give me all this other stuff. You ain't got to give me well, connections. Uh -uh -uh. He, he is the great connector. You, you, you ain't got to tell me who's in who. If my name is never on skyscrapers, Jesus is enough. You got to be content in your walk with God. And if I never get to the point where people want me to be, Mm -hmm. If I never get to the place where people want me to be, or people want you to hurry up and do this, hurry up and do that. If you never get to that place, as long as I got Jesus, that's enough. That's enough. So perhaps there may be one today that's not saved. Secondly, if you're a backsliding Christian, why don't you come? If you need a church home, why don't you come and connect with us? Lastly, if you stand in need of prayer. You, uh, I ain't gonna sing it, but uh, Jane Cleveland wrote a song, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. Will there be one? Will there be one that is amen? But when, amen. But when you think about, when you think about what the Lord has done for us, when you think about who he is, when you think about what he means, you gotta get satisfied with Jesus and him alone. Amen. So be, being that no one came Amen. No one desires prayer. Amen. As we go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you that you're more than enough. You are enough. We thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name. God, bless Oak Grove. Bless us in a mighty special way that, God, we be that church that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Sin now, labor us to work in the vineyard and God those that are slow to work God give them that boost of energy that they'll get up oh God and get busy for you for God we know that the world is ready to be picked for you so God help us to be those living walking epistles help us to be that light help us to be that salt in the name of Jesus that God as we go from day to day others will see you and us that they'll come crying what must I do to be saved God, we ask that all the glory, all the honor, all the praise go to you. None of us, but all to you. As we thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus is the best thing that ever. 
Jesus is the best thing ever. You think about it as you leave today, how he is the best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Gladys Knight first wrote the song. She first wrote the song and she was talking about a man. And I don't know who that man was, but Jane Cleveland, he got the song. He said, wait a minute, hold up. I don't know what man you were talking about. But, 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 but Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. If, if I lose everything, if I lose you, if I lose you, if I lose you, I hope I don't. But if I lose you, and just give me Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. That ever happened. Oh, Jesus. Is yes, he is. Yes. Glory to God. Jesus is the best. Thing yes, He is. That ever to me. Uplifting hands. Father, we thank you for time well spent. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Thank you, God, for the move of God. And God, we ask that, Lord, you give a benediction from this place. Never from your presence. Keep us in the hall of your hand. Keep us in the city of your will to that appointed time that we'll come together. But God, if you crack the sky this afternoon, we want to hear you say, well done. And now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule about us henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen.